In this video, we will look at the essentials of disk partitioning. What is it and how does it work? So a disk partitioner is a program that runs in a single thread. Uh, and we draw that as a box. So this is our partitioner right here. The partitioner interacts with a disk over here. We will draw the disk symbol like a cylinder. And the partitioner interacts with the disk. Uh, the partitioner exposes, for example, three uh, virtual disks. So let's draw that as a dotted disk. three dotted disks and the third one the partitioner exposes these uh, three virtual disks uh, and we can have three clients running over here so a box again symbolizes a single thread of execution that interacts with the um, virtual disk So let's call this client 0, 1, and 2. That interacts with virtual disk 0, 1, and 2. <clears throat> the partitioner maintains uh, um, or keeps a table that it will use when it gets uh, commands from the clients to read or write the virtual disk. So let's look at this uh, table. This table has uh, three rows, two columns. So uh, the first uh, row is for virtual disk zero, virtual disk one, and virtual disk two. So let's say the uh, virtual disk zero is of size 200. Uh, the disk num number one is of size, let's say uh, 400. And the last one is 100. Now, in order to support these three virtual disks, uh, this one needs to be at least 700, but let's say it's 1,000. So the partitioner here can ask um, the disk, how large are you? And the disk answers back 1,000. But when the client here asks the virtual disk, the partitioner here has to look up in the table how large the disk is. So let's say uh, client 1 here asks its virtual disk 1, how large are you? Uh, the partitioner will look up in the table and answer 400 back. So for client number 1, it looks as if it is talking to a disk that is of size 400. Uh, another operation that you might do against a disk is to write one of the entries. So let's say disk number uh, client number one wants to write entry number five, and it will provide some data as well. When the partitioner gets this uh, message, it will uh, look up in the table what the offset of this uh, disk is. So because disk number one here is of size 400 starting at 200 the partitioner partitioner will add 200 to 5. so this one asks to read number five so of course it doesn't need to provide any um, any data if it's read if it reads so it'll ask to read number five uh, the partitioner will add 200 and will ask to read entry number 205. When the data gets back, the partitioner answers to client number one uh, with the data. Uh, another thing that the part partitioner has to do is to check that uh, the entry is not outside the bounds of the virtual disk. So let's say the uh, client number two here 
asks to read entry number 105. When the partitioner gets this, it looks up in the table and sees that partition 2 is of size 100. And that is, uh, so this is outside the bounds of the disk. So it will return false. Let's look at an implementation of a disk partitioner. Uh, here we have an implementation of a disk partitioner that takes about 100 lines of code. The first 50 lines or so takes in the number of partitions and their sizes. It then checks with the disk that it is connected to that it can actually support uh, these partitions. And it also checks that the partitions are specified in the right amount, like in whole numbers and not negative numbers. The next 100 lines or the next 50 lines or so, does the actual disk partitioning work? So let's uh, run the disk partitioner. Let's step through the code. Okay, so we enter the disk partitioner. And the first thing we do is to check whether one of the virtual uh, disks, the clients of the virtual disks have some commands. So we check if it has the entries command. Now it does. So client zero asks for how big the disk is. Then we can simply look up in our table, in our partition data table here. And we can see that the size of disk zero is 200. So that will be returned to the client. Let's see what the second client does. It asks for the size as well. It will look up and return 400. And the third client does the same. So now we're complete with the first iteration. Second iteration. Let's see what the client asks for now. So the client asks to write to the disk. So it asks uh, client zero, asks to write to entry number five. So we will add the offset, but of course, client zero is at the beginning of the disk. And it will write simply it will not add an offset and simply write to the disk. Let's see what the second client does. It writes as well. It also wants to write to entry number five. But now an offset is added. Uh, an offset of uh, 200 is added. So the, uh, the source disk needs to write to entry number 205. Let's see what the... Uh, third client does. It also wants to write entry number five. Let's see what the offset is. So now the offset is 600. And as you can see, um, every time an operation is performed on the disk, um, it checks whether the entry is within the partition size. Uh, also note that there are three operations that need to be supported in order to implement a disk. And if you want to learn more about these three operations, entries, read and write, you can check out a separate video on that. If you found this video interesting and would like to learn more, check out the book Foundations of Computer Science available on Amazon.